Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Lucklight here, and uh, we're continuing uh, Doki Doki Literature Club. And uh, I just had a moment of uh, emotional destruction as I uh, we talked to Sayori and found out about her depression and uh, how much it kind of resonated with me. It uh, I did not do well. I kind of uh, fell apart a little bit, but I'm back. I'm good now. We're going to continue. We'll see if anything actually spooky happens. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri's about to come over too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah! Thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known it, I would have reassured you and hurried more on the way home. I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I said to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope to, to get... Wow. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it'll be fine. I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. My house is kind of boring looking. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Ah, uh, no. I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Uh, that would have been even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there. <laughs> I snatch Yuri's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap. As if she's making sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Uh, yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking that far. Of course. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will stop by just by out of... Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. I'm still a bit tongue-tied. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to prove... I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy for to get that you're a pretty intense person. Uh, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? It makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder-shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. Ooh, my ear's ringing. What's that wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air of itself. You can e even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole in the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells like a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Do you think that will be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this, so I trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, 
Did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? We also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is, is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you'd put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me or is she even more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker, Lucklight. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Ah, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. Carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Huh? The knife is strangely beautiful. She's into knives, isn't she? The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. Looks really fancy. Ah, uh, well... Embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're gonna think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know? If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Alright. Thing is, I'm kinda into knives. They're just so pretty. I, I can't help it. I don't know what it is. A combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe? Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's, well, an interesting interesting thing to be into, I guess. I kind of think it suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. Besides, it's a really cool looking knife, I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Kiri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow. Lock. Why'd you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Uh, she stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ha ah, ah. ha. Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. Whoa, what? I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Oh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head and her face burning. Up. Yuri, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. Could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sure it was a little weird, it took me by surprise, but I guess she was just trying to help, right? Yeah, I think you're overreacting a little. She doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover for this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, and I'll do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. <laughs> Look, did you really just do that? Now we're even. Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird. <laughs> she giggles shyly. <laughs> You're calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It was just a tiny cut. Look, I already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I cut to continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected and would be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thing coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One of, the items, one of the items Yuri had asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. 
if you fill the cups too much, it'll be too diluted. Taking years' advice, I decided to use a small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring them back into my room. Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly, unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. What did you just do? What did she just do? Oh no. What did she just do? I sense a disturbance. Oh boy. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I like to paint a gradient across the banner. Starting with the colors for sunrise, then daytime, then sunset and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Ah, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me, if you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and has a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like the art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri stops painting for a moment thinking to herself, For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it is something simple, like reading. It doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over to the banner to grab an unused paintbrush. But I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Oh, here we go. Kya! Sorry! Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. You just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel that I dampen it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back down in front of her. Oh, she's cutie. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with a towel. Ah, something wrong? It's hot, but I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. But Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Eh? Just for a little longer. Feels really nice. Ah, uh, I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist, sending a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah. Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Just kiss the girl, would ya? Yuri picks up her brush again. But her moments seem clumsier like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve her own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true. Won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here, then have you bring it in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew. You say it like you're glad it's over. Well, I was wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit. Ah, uh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. 
I need to start making dinner soon. Uh, so you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we'd have extra time after finishing the work. Well, Yuri thinks to herself, I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the more important thing is we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all our things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. Sounds like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then, Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Because we can do this again. Whatever you want, you can come over. Or we can go out somewhere. Uh, I'm afraid you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so you're very thoughtful. You're very thoughtful, okay? Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. You are getting a little closer. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. It's Yuri. Eh? Ah! Hi, Lucklight. Sayori's here. Just now, we weren't... <laughs> it's okay. I had to stop by to say hi. Um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. We'll all be able to talk at the festival tomorrow, so so that's fine, right? Of course. Sayori beams. Yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sayori waves a goodbye after. Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Ah, uh, well, I tried staying in my room. My imagination was really being mean to me, so I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri, and how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you've made, made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. Oh, here we go again. My, my poor emotions. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if it could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori, what I said before was true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making out to me. It's something that makes me happy. It's something I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But, Sari looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sari? I'm scared that, that I might like you more than you like me. Sari? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and, that's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now, and that's what I'm going to give to you. Sayori. Oh, no. I feel like if I say the wrong thing here, I could make this way, way worse. But at the same time, I'm going to think about what I would actually do. Right now, she doesn't need a relationship. She needs... She needs friendship and companionship. I know that's what I would need in this situation, so I'm gonna pick that. You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is for things to be like they've always been. She did say that. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. 
I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now, but please trust me that I know what's best and will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll help get things back to the way they were. Hey, I see. Suri forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. Uh, is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? I should write a poem about this. Sayori, it's okay. This is just my punishment, remember? Oh no, what's going on? For being so selfish. So please, please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time that there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here, just so I get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing. You're also right that I just wanted to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all, so... Sari's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden she turns around and drops to her knees. I'm not gonna scream. But she screams. Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked I didn't know how to react. Sari looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Oh no, what'd I do? I'm left helplessly standing in front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more that I could have done. The more I could do is support Sari through her feelings and help me put on her path that's right. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sari's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more, something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Sari will always be my dearest friend, and I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. Let me clear my throat here again. Ooh, boy. Okay. It's the day of the festival. I should save. I feel like I'm going to regret saving it all in one square, but that's alright. If we screw it up, we'll play again. I think that's how you're supposed to do this anyway, right? Multiple endings and stuff. These kind of games. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. Now Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I paint is dry, and I gently roll it up to take it with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I had feeling, probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I get to spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. That's me. You're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica's placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones prepared that, that has all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sari with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that on days this important she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sari told me yesterday. I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly as simple for her. I don't say it because it's the way I'm used to thinking, but maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, luckily. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. Wait, how do you know about that? You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? How do you know that? Strange. Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But I stammer embarrassed. Did Sarah really tell her about that quickly? About how I basically turned her down her confession? It makes me see really seem like the bad guy here. Damn it. Maybe I did choose wrong. But I'm the one who knows who knows what's best for her, right? Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Monica is being as friendly as usual. For some reason, I feel a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to go check out the pamphlets? They come out really nice. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Alright, everything's starting to be weird now. Again. <clears throat> I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desks. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people tell the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem was nearly printed on his own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki's and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one they haven't read before. Oh. 
Oh, oh God. Oh no 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 no. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Holy. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't do this to me, game. Uh, what is this? Ringing the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Luck? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. More than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Sayori, so, uh, well, all right. I'm trying to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls this hour for me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? She would try a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal. At least wait for her help wake her up. Even the simple gesture of waking her school only makes her happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs, and what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. Isn't that more something like a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have her enter a room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Oh shit! What the fuck? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Dot dot dot. What the hell? And why did the game just like break all of a sudden? Did you see that? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. <clears throat> Everything was normal up to a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday. I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? This music is really giving me the chills. What did I do wrong? Turning down her confession? That has to be what pushed her over the edge. Her agonized scream still echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her when she needed me the most? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts kept telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I had just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and gave her what I know she wanted out of her relationship, then I could have prevented this. So I, if I paid more attention to her, she w this wouldn't have happened? I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do to bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. The fourth wall? I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. Now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now I can never take it back. Never. 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 That was the end of the game. What the hell? Now this is all glitchy. Everything else seems fine, but this is all glitch, glitch mess. Um, can I load? Characters Sayori.chr. The file is missing or corrupt. Save file is corrupt. Starting a new game. It doesn't let you. 
What the hell's going on? It doesn't let you load! And now the game's all fucked up? <clears throat> I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. The music's all weird, too. The girl is blah, 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 my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. So this is the... we're starting over. But it's... glitched up? She's gonna chase after me this. I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and I don't feel glad to... Um... What? What? What is happening? It's an ordinary school day like any other. Morning's usually the worst, being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. Okay, so... Still in the history. Did it just erase her from the entire game? That's what it meant by, like, character is gone? I always tell myself it's about time I met some girls or something like that, but I have no motivation to join any clubs. Perfectly content by getting on the yeah, average most fun anime. So is the anime club. It's not like there are any girls in it anyway. School day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I knew it. So if she's gone, how am I going to join the literature club? Why is she gone? Why is she gone from the game? What? After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs... There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with. I guess I should have no choice to start with the anime club. Someone calls my name. Whoa, what? Monica? Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Yeah, it has. Oh, that's right, they knew each other beforehand. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at really me genuinely feels a little... What did you come in here for, anyway? I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Uh, about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for the events. Alright, so it's repeating, but it's like different. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. What's with the... What's with the static? A literature club. Literature? That sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? Um... Huh. It's kind of embarrassing there are only three of us so far. Three, not four. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. It's really not boring at all, you know? Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry... I mean, one of my members even keeps her mega collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature, too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. Besides, a member's a member, right? Did Maka say she? Hmm. Hey. By any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so, but in that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but if you could at least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please. Um, well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Ah, awesome. You're really sweet. You know that? It's nothing, really. Shall we go, then? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica in an irresistible smile. That's different, too. I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit being generally used for third-year classes activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm back. I brought a guest with me. Okay, that's gonna, like, spook me every time. <laughs> Just the... <laughs> I guess? 
Seriously, you brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. So let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? Well, no I'm not. Natsuki. Girl with a sour attitude, her name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. Anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. So Yuri's the vice president now. It's nice to meet you. Yuri appears comparatively more mature and timid and seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So I ran into him in a classroom and decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica, didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was gonna, well, you know, sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri wants to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So I know you didn't really plan on coming in here. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are really interested in putting out the effort to start something brand new. Especially with something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have really worked hard to find just these two. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot, hot cup of tea and help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I guess. Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh, that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I believe you. While tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So look, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read the past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It's like she wants to say something, but keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke with thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. Ugh, I, I already did this. <laughs> but it's so weird! Telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious that her way her eyes light up she finds her comfort in the world of books and not people. But you know, I like a lot of things, story with deep psychological elements, usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing that how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. I read a horror book once. I just really grasped something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. <laughs> I expect that from you, Yuri. It suits your personality. Oh, is that so? Really, if a story makes me think it takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Damn it! <laughs> Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right. You usually like to write about cute things, don't you? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper out behind last club meeting. Looks like you're working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud, and give that back. Fine, fine. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. I'm not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing the level of writing takes more than just confidence. Choose form of writing is writing to oneself. Alright, all this stuff is just repeating now. Except Sayori's missing. I 
I, th I think I'm just gonna stop reading out loud and... Hey, I just got an idea. Yeah, this is all the same. I did decide to take on their spice ability of Vice President. Besides, now that we have a new member, it's time to good step up. Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made a decision. is, we don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four, and I've been trying really, really hard to find new members. And if we don't find one more before the festival... Yeah, this is all the same. I guess we're now we're an official club. Thanks, I guess. Okay. We officially end today's meeting on a good note. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? Something really wrong here. Mine wanders back and forth between the third girls, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a lyrics club? Alright. I gotta write a poem. You've unlocked a special poem, would you like to read it? Stare at the dot to reveal a special message. No. No. We're not doing screamers. I, I fell in for this before when I was a kid. Oh. It just says I love you. Okay. Got me. Alright, so... There's only two of them now. I still can't take... I, I still can't... Oh, my, my save is gone. <laughs> what happens if I go to back to the main menu? Is the main menu still screwy? Yep. Man, that's weird. Oh, that's a help browser. Eh, let's close that again. Alright, well... Okay. What happens if I pick suicide first? Whoa, did you see her face? She had like a, like a slasher scary face. That was kind of weird. Alright, didn't do it that time. I'm gonna keep looking at her. Like, just keep watching her. Like, she might do it again. All the words that were originally for Sayori are now hers, apparently. Now I'm just paying attention to her. That was like super creepy. But it's also when I said like, suicide, so... At least the music's still good.
And it doesn't seem to be doing it again. Okay. Hi again. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Eh, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least keep my word. Whoa. Why does she have no face for a second and then glitch out and then came back? Okay, this is... I'm gonna sit up now, because I was... I've been lounging. And this is now bothering me. I'm gonna, uh... Kind of stretch here. I'm a little shaken. Okay. Oh, hello. Why are you in front of the... You're now in front of the text box. Nice skirt, by the way. The music kind of got weird there for a sec. Or, did, or am I the only one who noticed that? Like, everything is kind of sh making me shaky. <laughs> I'm just gonna go through the text. This is kind of the same text. It's just things are going wrong. Be the book. Wait, I did zoom in a bit. Alright, Yuri's buried in a book. I have time to rest my voice because this is all text I've read before. Yes, why do you have two copies of the same book? Because she bought it. Because she's into me. Wait, this is new. Sorry, I skipped through it. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison and began... People trapped there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. I don't think that happened last time. But the facility gets even worse and they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to... Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. Anyway, I'm really into it. The book, I mean. Not the thing about the limbs. Kind of dark, isn't it? All right, so that was different. Uh. But because, all right. First of all, the text just went weird. But because the world is full of horrible people, and we're all worthless anyway. What? is going on then suddenly Ugh. 
It's like someone else took over her voice there for a second. My whole body gets incredible. Whoa, what? That didn't. That didn't register. Okay, what the hell? Alright, that spooked me. <laughs> I jumped. We just get the book. I open the book and start the prologue. Here is in the corner of my eye. She's not looking at her own book. I was just bathing. It just said I was bathing in your body heat. Yeah, that didn't register either. Oh, that's weird. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the horror part. This is, this is legitimately like, really, not cool to me. <laughs> like I'm just kind of like. Ugh. All right, so this, this is that scene again. trouble sleeping, I swear. It doesn't help that I'm wearing headphones as well. Like, so the sounds are like in my ear. I don't remember that crazy face. She didn't have that crazy face last time, I don't think. Okay, she's getting like manic now. She's not as shy as she was last last playthrough. Her breathing's all messed up. I didn't even notice. I just need some water. Alright, don't push yourself. Shoot. What on earth was that about? Luck? Did something happen just now? I have no idea. You are acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything. Sorry, can't say I do. Are you worried about her? Oh, no, not really. I was just make sure you didn't do anything to her. No, nothing. Ha, <laughs> don't worry. I believe you, silly. Yuri just does this sometimes, so it's nothing alarming. Okay, so her personality just changed. Alright, if you say so. Anyway, why don't we start with sharing our poems with each other? Eh? Huh? Should we wait for Yuri? Well, she might be a while, so I figured we'd just get her started without her. She stands up. I made a mental note of where I left off in the book, and I slip it back in my bag. Let's just start with Monica. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. Since you're new and everything, if you have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'd be afraid to bring things up. Much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. We're a little embarrassed today, you know? Alright, we've already done this. It's really metaphorical. I 
like she's being indulged like that. Like earlier. She gets too simulated. Yuri, I'm back. Did I miss anything? Not really. Well, we all started sharing our phones with each other. Already? I'm sorry for being late. Alright, let's read her poem. Alright, we already did this. Hole in the wall. This is new. But he wasn't looking at me. Confused, I frantically glanced at my surroundings, but my burned eyes can no longer see color. Are there others in this room? Are they talking? Or are they simply poems on flat sheets of paper? The sound of frantic scrawling playing tricks on my ears. The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe dissipates before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right there. He's right there. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. What? It's very freeform. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, this kind of style is going pretty popular nowadays. Alright, this has been said before. Now she's talking about her epiphany. <laughs> Sorry, I just burped. <laughs> it was a fear burp. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. Yep, Charity gave you this. Okay, thanks for the... Right, let's talk to Yuri now, now that I can. Exceptional. Alright, it looks like the same. I'm sorry if I'm not reading it over again. <clears throat> we read this a few hours ago. Well, a few episodes ago. First time, really. And this part when she's like, "You're new." Ghost under the light. Tenders of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. Must be this one. Last remaining street light type was stood the test of time. Last yet to be replaced by a sickening blue green of the future, I bathe. Yes, yeah, this is the same one as last time. I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. What? It's about. It's not about ghosts. Like I, I feel like I'm just like on edge, like, <laughs> just waiting for the next weird nonsense thing to happen. Like, I'm, I am not okay. I guess we gotta talk to Natsuki. Alright, she still thinks I'm not taking this seriously. the same one. Okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is the same comments. Alright, so I'm gonna save here. I am not okay. I'm gonna stop for now. I'm gonna take a couple minutes to, uh... Um... Sounds all messed up, but, um... I, uh... I have the, um, the game folder open over here on another screen. And, uh, I've noticed some things. There's some extra files that were just created. And, uh, one of them is called Can You Hear Me? And if I open it up, I I'll read it out loud. Um, it says, There's a little devil inside all of us. Beneath their manufactured perception, their artificial reality, is a writhing, twisting mess of dread. Loathing, judgment, elitism, self-doubt, all thrashing to escape the feeble hold of their host, seeping through every little crevice they can find, into their willpower, starving them of all motivation and desire, into their stomach, forcing them to drown their guilt in comfort food, or into a newly opened gash in their skin, hidden only by the sleeves of a cute new shirt. Such a deplorable, tangled mass is already present in every single one of them. That's why I choose not to blame myself for their actions. All I did was untie the knot. Okay, and, and the reason I have this folder open is because that's how I started the game. Um, there's also a, I think, a PNG file called Happy Thoughts. Oh, okay, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna open this. And I'm gonna, uh, put it on screen. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll do window capture. We're on OBS here. There it is. That is in the folder, the game folder. Um. This is like creepypasta material now. And it's legit giving me the heebie-jeebies. So we're gonna close that, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna delete that. We're not gonna delete the image, but we're gonna delete the um, the look back. And um, let me see if there's anything else that was created by that. No, I don't see anything else. But that's pretty weird. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to um I'm going to take a break. Get my uh my bearings back and uh we'll be back for another session of this uh for me in a few minutes for you in the next episode. So come on back and watch me get super scared. So I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.